love. Stay tuned for Air Gun Detectives. Welcome to another episode of Air Gun Detectives. I'm your host, JC, and I get to bring to you our special series here on rare and unusual air guns. And uh, this one's pretty special to me, and it's actually rare. And I'll talk about it in just one second. If you have a chance, though, do me a favor. If you hadn't already, hit that subscribe button down in the corner. Really helps the channel, really supports it. Doesn't cost you anything, it's absolutely free. Also, uh, check out my website when you have a chance, www.airgundetectives.com. On that site, I've got various t-shirts. I got my Generation 2 bipods, which you see right here. I've got hats, and I also have a lot of my personal inventory that I've been uh, putting up, and it goes really, really fast, I'm telling you. And what I do with that personal inventory, the reason I put it up there, I sell it, and then I take that revenue, and I turn around and I try to buy other things that we can review for you. So that's, it's kind of just a cycle. Anyway, let's get back to this. All right, as far as our rare and unusual, this is rare. And what this is, this is my very first brake barrel I ever purchased over 30 something years ago. And this is a Gamo Hunter 220, a 177 caliber. So I thought it would be appropriate that we'd start this off with uh, my very first brake barrel rifle. And uh, these were quite the thing uh, when they came out because I was always used to the multi pumps or the CO2s, things like that. So. When I first saw this, I was like, wow, really? You just cock the barrel one time and you can get that type of velocity? So let's talk about this. This is the Gamo Hunter 220. This is made in Spain. And it's actually quite the rifle, it really was. And I picked it up at a local uh, sporting goods store at the time. And I remember it came with some inexpensive little scope on it, but it was like a, a whole package deal. So this rifle, it's uh, 43 inches overall. With the scope, it weighs about seven and a half pounds, the whole rifle does. It's got a 16 inch barrel. It's got an ambidextrous wood stock, completely wood stock on this. It's got uh, adjustable open sights for elevation and windage. And if you notice one thing about this rifle, there's, it's all metal, there really is. I mean, everything on this is, is metal with the exception obviously the sights and the uh, trigger guard here that's actually plastic. But this has an 11 millimeter scope mount. And uh, this gun was actually advertised, there was a sticker on it, I can show you that. It advertised it as a thousand feet per second. So actually, so think about 30 something years ago, you're like, wow, a brake barrel you can cock at one time, get a thousand feet per second. That's just crazy. This also was the very first rifle that I put my bipods on and did my testing on. So this definitely is a, a special rifle. The finish on this and the bluing is just amazing. If you notice, there's not a lot of, uh, there's not a lot of plastic on it or shroud. This is just an all metal barrel. So there's no suppressor on it. It is what it is, but they, they actually did a good job putting this one together. They really did. So anyway, let's uh, just for fun though, let's go out and let's test it. And I just want to show you how a 30 year rifle is going to perform. And then we'll come back and we'll just talk about it for a little bit. Because you know what? You never can tell. I've seen these on eBay. I've seen them uh, at various uh, pawn shops. And you just might be surprised at the performance of this rifle. So let's go uh, continue our rare and unusual series and go out and test this rifle. All right. Stay tuned for the next segment. Okay. Now let's just test our Gamma Hunter for fun over the chronograph. We're just going to use the Diablo Basic, a seven grain pellet. Let's just shoot five shots. Just to average it out. These just cock so easy. They really do. Alright, shot number one. 981. Shot number two. 974. Shot number three. 973. Shot number four. 971. And last but not least, shot number five.
980. So there you go. These, yeah, these things shoot pretty hard. Again, <laughs> my very first brake barrel ever. Anyway, I just want to show you guys that performance. Hey, you never can tell. You might see one of these for sale somewhere. At least you're going to know how it performs. All right, let's move on to the next segment. Okay, let's test our uh, Gamma Hunter or 220 here for some accuracy. Let's see how, see how accurate a rifle that's over 30 years old is. So we're going to go ahead and use some Barracuda Field Target trophies. These are 9.57 grain. Slow this gun down, just or the rounds down just a little bit, see if we can get some better accuracy. Uh, we're going to go ahead and shoot our 4-inch splatter burst. Come this nice roll now. Love the impact points. I'll leave you guys a link down below. So you can reference that if you like to. Uh, we're at usual 20 yards. Go ahead and take a quick look. Yeah, remember we're going to just go for grouping here. So we're going to do five shots as usual. Cocking effort on this is just nothing. It really is. All right. Let's see how well we can make this group. All righty. That's one. And two. And three. And four. And five. Whoa, that is one heck of a group, I'd say. Not bad for a 30-year-old rifle. Okay, let's move on to the next segment. Since we're showing you the rear air, gu air gun, we're also going to do a trigger test on it. And you guys can see this is not a stock trigger. It's a GR, uh, GRT3. Put this on there years ago. But let's go ahead and test it just so you can see that, how it performs on the rifle. All right, so got our trusty Lyman trigger gauge. And let's just do one pull. All right, that's one pound, 3.5 ounces. One pound, 3.5 ounces. Pretty awesome trigger, actually. It really is. But anyway, just so you can see how it performs. All right, let's move on to the next segment. My favorite portion of any review, as you guys know, is the plinking session, even in the rare and unusual. So let's see how well our 30-year rifle does at 40 yards. Got a few targets set up there. We're going to go ahead and shoot our Barracuda filled target, the 9.57 grains. These actually do pretty well in this rifle. Little wind today, so I'm glad we're doing a little bit of the heavier pellet for the 177. But anyway, we're our usual 40 yards back, our plinking range. Go ahead and take a quick look. You can see we got some steel eggs set up there, and I got a can and a little piece of pipe. So we're going to try to knock that down, see how we do. If we miss, we miss. It's just the way it is. I'm not so sure if this uh, scope is keeping up with the rifle right now because it seemed to move on me a little bit so we'll see it's a little more critical at this distance but <clears throat> let's find out anyway let's start with the can on the right side definitely a hit and we're gonna work our way over to the left there so now that little piece of pipe let's see how well we can do Actually, I saw that one. That one just went to the right of the pipe. I don't know if that was me. Oh, my God. Let me try that again. That's definitely a hit. I aimed just a little bit to the left that time. I think that might be the secret here. That's a hit. 
we got two more of those guys. Alright, and one more. This thing actually hits really well. And for such a light compact rifle, it really is a, a neat little guy. That's for sure. All right, let's move on to the next segment. Wrap it up. Okay, that was a lot of fun. It's always fun shooting this rifle. In fact, um, this rifle, this made my, uh, well, how would we say this, wall of fame? In my office, I have a handful of air guns that are uh, rifles that I've got mounted uh, high up on the, uh, the wall and it surrounds my office and this is one that definitely earned that spot. So rare, yes, they don't make it anymore and it's special because it is my first break barrel. But how did it perform? You guys tell me. I thought it performed really, really well. Um, let me tell you the only negative on this rifle initially was the one, it came with a metal trigger and they're real heavy. It's the same design they use in Crossman and a few others. So I did upgrade this to one of the GRT3 uh, triggers and you guys saw how well that performed. And uh, that made all the difference in the rifle. It really, really did. But that was my only negative on this, really. Now, full disclosure on this, last year I did a full tune on this. Didn't really need it. The spring needed lubricated because after a while they make a little bit of sound, so you, you need to lubricate the spring. But ironically, a couple years before that, I saw a deal on eBay for, um, it was for a, gas piston for this and it came with a new piston seal and it was like 35 bucks and i believe our friends at custom uh uh air seals custom air seals out of australia had uh, actually sold that so it's been that kit has been sitting around for years and finally this last year i said you know what i'm just going to install it for fun now honestly full disclosure the rifle doesn't perform much different the velocity was about the same uh everything else it's uh it was always a very, very smooth shooter. Never had any issues with it. I also, since I was taking that apart, I decided to refinish the stock. You guys see the, the finish on this stock. So I uh, stripped it down, sanded it, restained it, and, uh, and then put a bunch of coats of uh, some urethane on this. And uh, I think it looks, it looks it looks pretty impressive in my opinion. It really does. But one thing about the, this earlier gamos is the bluing on this gun is so nice. It really is. If you guys can catch that at all, just want you guys to catch that. But the bluing is really nice. Also, this was a perfect candidate for my Generation 2 bipods, or actually any of my bipods, but the, I got the Gen 2s on here now, and it shoots really well with that. Just such a stable platform. If you guys are interested in that, you know, go to the website and pick those up. But I love the overall finish and, and what we did here. But uh, performance-wise, let's talk about this. This gun, I mean, seriously, has some good accuracy. You saw the target. You saw what we shot there. And we're also putting close to that 15 foot-pounds of energy with a 177. That's really, really good. It, it really is. So again, rare, 30 plus years old. You guys might be able to find these, like I said, on eBay or uh, garage sale or something, just so you guys know what they are. But overall, the performance of this gun is really, really good. It, it's definitely up with all the ones in modern day, and that's for sure. So I would actually, the way this rifle is now, I would, I would totally give it a five star rating. I totally would. And I think it well deserves it, that's for sure. But like I said, from the beginning, right out of the box, this was a smooth shooter. I think Gamma was like way ahead of their time. And by the way, you know these are made in Spain, right? Gammas are all made in Spain. So this one was definitely made in Spain. So anyway, I just wanted to give you guys a close-up look of an older rifle that means something to me. And I figured it was kind of a good way to start this series out. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Remember, once a month, I'm going to feature a rare or unusual air gun for all of 2023. So once a month, in addition to our other review videos, we're going to do something uh, rare and or unusual. So once again, don't forget, this is where we take the mystery out of the air gun. I hope you and your families are all doing well, you're staying healthy, and you're getting plenty of shooting in. So until next time, take care, 
and God bless.